So, hello, and you're here again, and this time you're here for a great book, funny book, Candide, aren't you? Yes, yes, you're here. We're doing Candide. So we are traveling again. We are crossing the Alps, heading for next month. Our next stop is Germany. And while we cross the Alps, we are what we are going to read the Swiss Voltaire with his wonderfully, wonderfully satirical novel, novella. It's like tiny, 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 which is why we're doing two this month. Candide. Now, I told you last time that this that that was the first of three books that I discovered musically first. So if you don't want to watch Candide, read Candide. If you don't want to read Candide, then I suggest you pop across, have a look, see if you can find any, any, just about any good production of Leonard Bernstein's musical Candide. It is the best of all possible worlds. In the best of all possible worlds, that is a great starting point, especially if you can find the one with Patti LuPont as the old woman. She is hysterical. You've so got to see Patti LuPont as the old woman. Even if, even just, just Google, I'm easily assimilated. I'm going to put it, it's so good, I'm putting it in the show links, okay? So good. You have to watch that. He's so good. Candide is the most accessible of all the three musical pieces because it's an operetta, it's light, it's in English, yay! We can understand what people are saying, yay! Um, usually has a mix of Broadway and operatic stars because the music is more singable. But Candide, Candide is, it's named Candide or Optimism. Optimism is a bit of a a bit of a misnomer when looking at 18th century French philosophy. Optimism, as we understand it, always looking on the bright side, the sunny side of life, um, has a certain resonance in this. Candide is certainly optimistic. He's a lovely, he's another lovely character like Tom Jones. So he's, he, and, and like Tom Jones, he is a bastard brought up in a noble family who is kicked out of doors after he falls in love with his uh, the nobleman's daughter he may actually be her cousin it's not quite it's never quite known whether or not he is actually the daughter of the sister of the duke of westphalia but having been brought up the duke of westphalia and candide and everybody there thinks that they live in the best of all possible worlds and they are encouraged in this belief by dr pangloss who teaches that this is the best of all possible worlds. And this is the idea behind optimism, 18th century optimism. 18th century optimism is not like modern optimism. It's actually, they didn't have a term pessimism. That doesn't that isn't coined until Coleridge, much, much later on. But optimism in this sense is actually a bit like pessimism. It's a quality of this is the best anything can possibly be, therefore there is no point changing it. It is, it is set, God's plan is this, this is what it is, we are not in a position to question that plan. So it, it does have a certain pessimistic quality of, yes, there is suffering and cruelty and whatnot in the world, but who are we to, to, to challenge that? Because we live in the best of all possible worlds. We live in the only world. We, but it is the best of all possible worlds. And Candide is thrown out of his home and thrown out of the best of all possible worlds into the big, wide, cruel world with Dr. Pangloss and, and sets out wandering to find... To, and, and encounters a whole lot of travails and troubles and wars and, and Westphalia is invaded and Cunegondel and her brother and Paquette, the maid, are all thrust out into the world. They're, they're, her parents are killed and she winds up in Paris having been, well, the story is that she was raped by Bulgars and then disemboweled, which turns out to be a great exaggeration. She was raped by Bulgars, but she now finds herself in Paris, where she is working, much like Manon, as a courtesan. 
she is the mistress of both a Jew and the Grand Inquisitor, who Candide, when he encounters her, kills both of them, which he finds very perplexing because he is the most mildest of men and the kindest of men, and he has just killed two holy men of two major religions in the space of about half an hour. Makes it a bit, but this is the best of all possible worlds, so this must be the best of all possible outcomes. He does rather rely. He leans on that. It's the best of all possible worlds. Ah, but Dr. Pangloss said this is the best of all possible worlds. They go to the New World and the Americas. Oh, and the old woman, as Kunigondel, is lamenting her fate of having been raped and had her parents killed and all of these sorts of things and being the, the, the mistress of, of two rich powerful men the old woman is like are you kidding are you kidding you have no idea what suffering is there is really a very a very funny one-upmanship of competitive suffering that occurs in this book everyone has it worse everyone has it worse the old woman has one buttock it was eaten the the you have to read it to find out about the old woman with one buttock, seriously. The old woman with one, one buttock is the best character in the entire thing, and she's the best character in the, in the musical. Seriously, watch. The musical is funny. It's possibly less satirical than it was meant to be, but Bernstein's score is just beautiful. I know you've all heard West Side Story. Candide, do Candide better, funnier. So they end up in the New World. Uh, Kunigondel is again finds herself mistress of a very powerful man and Candide goes off and discovers a utopia, a place that actually is the best of all possible worlds. You can't actually get there. Nobody knows how. They sort of stumble across it. But having stumbled across this utopia, they very quickly discover that the best of all possible worlds, the happiest of places, is unrelentingly boring just so boring so candide actually leaves the best of all possible worlds and returns to the world that is not the best of all possible worlds the deeply flawed world that we live in he brings money enough money back to the old world to be set himself up but it poses the question of, as humans, if we don't have adversity to challenge us, then what's the purpose of life? Do we, do we actually want to live in a world of complete and utter comfort? Is there a perverse pleasure in being able to complain about things? Is, there, is, is, is having obstacles in our path actually part of what makes our human experience interesting? These are questions that are really posed by Voltaire and are still relevant. We may not use the same. He was critical, very critical of this optimistic philosophy that he, he satirizes. But he also offers an, a, a remedy or at least a salve to the problems of the world, which I think given the nature of the times that we are currently living in, having really been living in to, for what, if we're in the West until last year, we were living in the best of all possible worlds. We were comfortable and we were indulged and we had no idea how well we have been comfortable and indulged and that privilege. And then we discover, oh, look, plague. Turns out all these crises, all these terrible things and, and the, we'll keep coming. We cannot insulate ourselves. So what is Candide's solution to the fact that you cannot insulate yourself? Is you tend your garden. You tend your garden, you tend your own business and you focus on that. You focus on that because sometimes what you need, what you need most, and this is what Candide understands instinctively because of his good nature and his, his, what he has internalised of the best of all possible worlds, sometimes what you, the best thing you can do for a chaotic and, and crisis-ridden world is to look after yourself and make sure you're well. 
So even when he goes through a crisis, he still eats, eats. Oh yes, I'm so hungry, I'm so overwhelmed, I couldn't possibly eat, he says as he finishes off a large dinner. You still, you look after yourself because we are always going to encounter crises. You cannot say it is the best of all possible worlds and Candide loses his faith in this precept when he meets slaves in South America who are so abominably treated and he cannot say, he cannot revert back to his, but Dr. Pangloss said this is the best of all possible worlds because if someone can be treated like that, it is not the best of all possible worlds. And so, no, it may not be the best of all possible worlds that we live in today. That doesn't mean we can't help work on making it better. And the best way we can work on making it better is make sure we are, 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 are looked after. So that's Candide for this month with a little bit of pandemic self-help perhaps. Next month, we are in Germany and we are going to be looking at Johann von Goethe's The Sorrows of Young Werther. So I look forward to seeing you then. And until we meet again, au revoir.